Welcome back to Sister 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 City Flags, now coming to you from a city without a flag. In previous videos, I've looked at flags in the West and the Midwest. Now let's look at the Not West, starting with the South. Oklahoma, Kentucky, and both Virginia. I know you're on the line between South and Not South, but for the purposes of this video, you're South. You got a problem? Take it up with Robert. Now let's start this video about the South with one of the least Southeast cities in the South, El Paso, Texas. El Paso's most prominent feature is its location, where the southern border meets the Rio Grande. I can think of a lot of ways to integrate that into a flag design. Here's two. So what did El Paso go with? This. Well, they've gotten Lone Star for Texas. That's it. Okay, disappointing, now let's see, Amarillo. EW! The flag of Amarillo thinks people should have two questions. Where is Amarillo on the North American continent? And why are the oceans full of blood? The flag answers half these questions, along with the inspiring motto, on paper. The two cities in Northwest Texas have something in common. They both want you to find them on a map. Now Laredo, Texas has an actually good flag. It's from the Republic of the Rio Grande, an 1840s rebellion based in Laredo. It may just look like Texas's evil twin Threxis, but it's a cool piece of history that lives on in Laredo today. San Antonio's flag includes the Alamo and the Lone Star. I'm not saying these shouldn't be on the flag, but you could have done better than just pasting clip art on a red and blue background and calling it a day. Also, I think Dallas copied your homework. Instead of an Alamo inside of a Lone Star, they have a Lone Star inside of a Lone Star inside of a Lone Star! Three times the stars, three times as Lone. Wait. Dallas County has its own flag. Texas. Blue flavor. Fort Worth has a flag too. I want to say this is bad, but as someone who's never been to Fort Worth, that is the exact image I think of when I think of Fort Worth. What about Houston? Hmm. Guys, I'm starting to think the Lone Star might be a little overplayed. Texan flags all have one thing in common. They all desperately, desperately want you to know that yes, yes, they are in Texas! So I guess they represent Texans perfectly. <laughs> Texans, send your complaints to the suggestion box located in your own rectum. Oh, I almost forgot Austin. Well, this flag isn't desperately trying to tell me it's from Texas. It's just... ugly as sin. They got a proposed new flag, and yep, that's pretty fucking Texan. Okay, let's see. Okay, see. The flag of Oklahoma City is the flag of Japan, except instead of looking like a giant ball of flaming light, the sun looks like the seal of the city of Oklahoma City. Yo, is this place a city? Tulsa got a brand new flag back in 2018. The blue represents the Arkansas River. The gold represents the black gold. Shouldn't it be black? The shield is a very simplified version of the Indian shield on the Oklahoma State flag. The red represents the blood from the very bad thing that happened here. And the white star represents the hope. The hope that we've moved past all that by now, right? It's a really good flag, and I like it a lot. Just one question. Why beige? Why not just have white? Flags need to be visually striking to serve their purpose as flags, so this should be a color palette. Notice the yellow, the white, the purple even, and the noble lack of bone. Before this flag, Tulsa had a flag that was boring. Before that, it had a flag that was also boring. Before that, it had a flag that was... Tulsa used up all the good flag points for Oklahoma, so on to Arkansas. You know the Nordic countries, right? You know, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Little Rock, Arkansas, Iceland. One of these things is not like the other. It's Finland. But also, why does Little Rock use Nordic Cross? Please don't be the racist reason. It's not the racist reason! But I did find a problem with the flag. You see that rock? That rock's large. Other Arkansas cities have flags too. They are boring. Louisiana. This is a state with some prime flag symbolism, especially New Orleans. Distinctive geography, interesting history, and an incredibly rich culture. While a lot of city flags are boring because there's just not a lot about the city that's interesting, sorry Fayetteville, New Orleans has no such problem. So what's their flag? It's just okay. The three fleur-de-lis represent France. The color scheme of red, white, and blue represents France. And the individual colors represent liberté, égalité, fraternité. Representing France. Okay, yes, the fact that it used to be a French colony is pretty important. But you know what else is important? Other things! Okay, I, I lied a little bit. The white isn't actually egalité. It's purity. Southern city omits equality in the middle of the segregation era. Eyebrow gets raised. The flag is fine, it's good enough, it's just... New Orleans has so much potential, they didn't have to lean all the way into France. Speaking of disappointment, Baton Rouge! This one's not because of its potential, it's because it looks like a box of chocolates that really wants you to think it's fancy. Lafayette uses the flag of Acadiana for most of its flag purposes. It's a pretty good flag, but it gets marked down because it's not actually the flag of Lafayette. It had a curvy design going, which I can get behind, but then you just... And it looks weird. There is nothing wrong with the flag of Jackson, Mississippi. Everything it does is just... Fine, design-wise. If Jackson was its own country, 
get me riding the streets, but the flag would be fine. The only thing is, nothing about this flag looks like it belongs to the deep, deep south. These are Pacific Northwest colors. I looked it up and there's no symbolism behind this green either. It's just green because they like the color, I guess. Which, I mean, fair. Now, is this a stupid and petty criticism? Yeah. But Lexington, Mississippi is a great, great, terrible example of a logo flag. Does our city have a flag? Yeah, but it's old and boring. Not befitting for a modern, attractive city, like we're trying to portray in our latest branding effort. But we have a newly designed logo to portray that exact message. So just make the logo the flag. Why has no one thought of this before? Logo flags are the worst kind of flag. Yes, worse than those. And those. Okay, not those, but for different reasons. The only thing worse than a flag designed by clueless city council members is a flag designed by a marketing team. For as bad as they are, and they are bad, these flags still have a human touch to them. In a way, these just don't. Case in point, Gulfport, where your ship comes in. I don't have a ship, dumbass. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Birmingham, Alabama, this is a weird flag. Let's read the symbolism. The seal depicts Vulcan, the Roman god of metalworking, representing the steel industry. That's really cool. I wish I could see it. The gold represents wealth, fair enough. The white represents purity, of the women. The red represents valor, of the men. The 67 stars represent the 67 counties of Alabama, 66 which don't include Birmingham, and the 85 golden rays represent that all roads lead to Birmingham. Not this one. Montgomery. Oh no. Everything about this flag is just a love letter to the Confederacy. The gray from the soldiers' uniforms, the obvious elements from the battle flag, the seven stars for the seven original states of the Confederacy. This is bad. Why is it bad? Let's spin the wheel to find out. Let's do Florida. Tallahassee, they've got another logo flag, which sucks because this logo would look really good if it was just adapted to a design on a flag, and their old flag is just Scotland with a seal. Tallahassee, the Scotland of the Gulf Coast. Jacksonville? What can I say except yeehaw? You can say a lot of bad things about this assault on the eyes, but you can't say they didn't try. Except on the bottom half, they kind of, they, they, they phoned that part in. That's not a weird bird, that's a map. Let's check out Gainesville. I gotta say, they put their best foot forward. Assuming their best foot is trains. Second best is circles. How about Orlando? Well, before 2017, they had a flag that was very Orlando, but not very... How do I put this? Good. And now they have a flag that looks good, but it also makes me think they're kind of into popping pimple videos. Tampa! Ah, what the hell? Okay, so the colors are inspired by the flags of the immigrants who sell the area. France, Britain, America, Italy, and Spain. Tampa is represented with a T, Hillsborough County with an H, and Florida with an F? This is, if you can believe it, a bit too much. It's such a clusterfuck that it almost becomes charming, actually. It doesn't, but it, it almost does. You know? Miami, this is just India. See me after class. St. Petersburg, Kissimmee, and Palm Beach misunderstood the assignment. You see, you were supposed to design flags, these are beach towels. So did Palm Bay, but their towel discovered water on Mars, so it gets a pass. Florida city flags are all the fuck over the place. With a lot of bad flags, you can tell where they went wrong. With Florida, what? Florida's collection of city flags are the most weird and unhinged of any state I've looked at thus far. And that way, they have captured the spirit of Florida perfectly. Hopefully Georgia will show us a return to sanity. I can count the good flags here on zero hands. Savannah, Georgia's flag screams, we are an American city, and we want a flag, but it has to be American. So we'll just take the elements of the American flag, and rearrange them a little bit, and then add our seal so people know it's us. The result is, surprise, a very boring flag. But apparently they have an alternate flag for St. Patrick's Day. That sounds really fun! Augusta used to have a flag that was a bit ugly, but not terrible. But fortunately, they've replaced it with a flag that's both ugly and terrible. Columbus, Georgia's flag is much better. It's a boat, inside a seal, inside a seal, inside a rectangle, inside a video, inside some light rays, inside your eyes, and you wish they weren't. Okay, Athens, Athens. You have a very obvious hook here. Your name. Just go Greek with it. Maybe blend the Greekness with something of your own. Most importantly, don't just put your city seal on it. Well, they didn't put their city seal on it. Well, that's not what I expected. I mean, at least it's something. It's got incredibly bad composition, and I can't tell what anything is, but at least they try- You okay, dude? Yeah, 
I just tripped over an incredibly low bar. And Atlanta is boring. They fucking followed me here. South Carolina, how's my second favorite Carolina doing? Charleston has an incredibly regal looking seal. It looks bad on a flag, but I can't say it's not extravagant. Well, get over yourself. Columbia, South Carolina's flag is... Good. I know, I'm surprised too. Just lost a thousand dollars in the bet. Columbia was founded as a city where people could find refuge under the wings of Columbia. So it's a wing. Kinda. My only wish that someday, Colombians will find a color other than blue. Damn it. I sure wish my thousand dollars back. Myrtle Beach stole their flag from somewhere in Florida. You can tell, cause it's a beach towel. North Carolina, how's my second least favorite Carolina doing? Fayetteville recently adopted a new flag. Oh, I hope it's good. It's not. You hired a marketing company and everything, and all your flag tells me is that you're in Texas. Which you aren't. What a shame. Holly's flag is just Peru, but with more prominence tree. Is it anything special? No, but is it ugly? Yeah, kinda. I'm not a big fan of Peru's flag either. Welcome to our Cary flag meeting in Cary, North Carolina, where we're gonna decide the flag of Cary, North Carolina. Now, let's start by asking, what do flags usually have on them? Stripes. They have stripes for sure. Stripes, yep, that's a good idea. All right, uh, let's see, uh, what else? Do you have any more ideas? Uh, words? Do flags usually have words on them? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, words. Uh, how many fonts are they usually in? Oh, at least three, preferably four. Gotcha. Oh, uh, Mr. Onbit Sheet, you have something to say? It needs a seal. Ah, great idea. All right, now we need something to tie it all together, just make it one complete package. Uh, any ideas? How about a pointless yellow border around the whole thing? <laughs> oh, you and your good ideas. That's why we call you Mr. Idea Guy. No, it's not. All right, and done. The seal should be bigger. This is the flag of Durham, North Carolina. It's okay, albeit very generic. The colors represent nothing. As far as I can tell. And the stars represent things that apply to basically everywhere. But, it falls into the upper echelon of city flags due to the earth-shattering feat of being not ugly. Greensboro is green. Charlotte is unique because it has two flags. The first one is just Scotland with a seal, again. Charlotte, the Scotland of the Catawba. The other is a crown, representing the elusive Queen Charlotte of North Carolina, the city's best kept secret, who lives deep in an underground vault so the CIA can't get her. Asheville uses maroon, which is cool. The rest of the flag isn't as cool, but hey! It's maroon. A quick jaunt across the Appalachians to Tennessee and Knoxville. Huh. So the seal's not great. Let's get that out of the way. The black and white looks pretty cool. I assume it's to do with coal considering the tools and the factory and the train and the Playboy bunny ears are kind of weird, but I don't know what goes down those mines. Then there's the fact that it glitches out on the left and becomes a completely different flag. That's kind of weird. My first thought was, but it's actually kind of grown on me. It's the third oldest city flag in America after Philadelphia and Cleveland, and unlike those, this one actually shows a shred of creativity. It's not particularly pretty, but it's got personality and it's got history, so I don't know, I say keep it. You can stay. For now. Chattanooga. Wow, a green-blue-green tricolor. I wonder if it represents a river running through a green place. It does? I never would have guessed. And the seal is just a coloring book illustration, right? The thing is, they had a pretty good flag until 2012 when these fuckers decided to change it. That's where this cannon is here. I put it there as a threat. When I was eight. Nashville. I see what you were going for with the Tennessee flag recolor, but the seal is ugly. When confronted with the reality that his flag is shit, Mayor Bill Nashville said, Flags are a subjective thing. There are not many flags with a skull on it. Virginia's flag's got a tit on it. He went special. Although, maybe he's got a point. Am I just too far up my own ass to realize the genius of this flag? Is it my elitist mindset that's blinding me to this flag's genius? Does the general public love this flag? Miss, miss, what do you think of this flag? It sucks. All right, thank you. Memphis really has something going for it with this land here representing the angle of the Mississippi as it passes by. But then you ruined it with Boat, Sun, Leaf, Cotton, Shelby, Memphis County, Tennessee. Top one ideas on how to improve the Memphis flag. Kentucky. Bowling Green. Yay! Its flag is good. Why is that gray and not white? But it's good! Louisville's flag is the most prototypical seal on a bedsheet out there. And the worst part is, it didn't have to be this way. 
The elements work. America plus France. Sure, sure. But they're placed really weirdly. Place the fleur de lis inside the circle, guys. It's not that hard. Not like that! Frankfurt, Kentucky's flag tells a story. The story of generic Boy Scout and badly compressed Indian. They are separated by a river. One lives in wide building, one lives in column building. Their rivalry stretches all the way back to 1786. How much is this true? No idea, never been. Lexington has a boring flag, but they've apparently adopted an alternate one. And it's just... Trademark horse. They trademarked the fucking horse. They call this flag the Lexington Pride Flag. Uh, that's what they all stands for. Ah, West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River, Economic Ruin, all that good stuff. Huntington has had three flags in the past 20 years. Uh, sorry, I meant Huntington. Unless that abstract swastika is supposed to be an H. <laughs> gear for progress. And it's got gears. It's funny! It's funny! The flag is funny! In 2004, they adopted a less funny flag. It's so... generic. Then in 2021, they changed the seal, and now the flag is a giant dandelion. Moving on. Charleston, West Virginia. Just yellow West Virginia. That would be cool if West Virginia's flag was good, but it isn't, so it's not. Morgantown. It has a drop shadow. You put a drop shadow on a flag. You put a drop shadow on a flag. You put a drop shadow- Wielding West Virginia. I rate this flag... Three and a half stars. Ah, uh, Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountains. Shenandoah River. Economic prosperity, all that good stuff. Sadly, none of the cities along the Appalachians actually have flags. Not Harrisonburg, not Roanoke, not Lynchburg or Blacksburg, the king, queen of... We swear it's just someone's last name. And just, don't Google Charlottesville flag. So I guess we start with Richmond. It's just a river man doing river man things, like rivering. But this flag is actually one of my favorites in the entire country. Here's the thing I've noticed with a lot of newer flags. The two shades of blue, the beiges and bones, the dynamic curved designs, and elements that seem more at home on a computer screen than on a waving piece of cloth. They tend to feel like products of the 21st century. And that's fine. After all, they are. But what if you're making a flag that you don't want to feel modern? Somewhere that wants to wear its centuries of history on its sleeve. Well, a lot of cities will take a seal, maybe add some bars, and call it a day. This looks official. This looks sophisticated. This looks like shit! But Richmond is one of the few times that a new flag manages to properly invoke a place's history. Look at it. What does it tell you? It's in America, obviously. The Ring of Stars tells you it played a part in the American Revolution, and the fact that only nine of them are shown has its own history. The guy on the river tells you the city is on a river. Whoa. But also that the city is pre-industrial. It's from a time when river faring was more common. All this symbolism is baked into one central design element, and importantly, the flag actually looks good! On top of this, there's really no other flag that looks like this. And there is a lot of flags. That's an achievement in and of itself. Norfolk's flag is stupid. This is an example of a flag trying to look historical by using a generic medieval font and squishing its ugly seal into a space it doesn't fit. Thank you, Norfolk, for being such a good counterexample. And Chesapeake, Newport News, and Virginia Beach are just a herd of seals on bedsheets again. Great. Way to bring down the mood, guys. Arlington's old flag looks like they used a generic placeholder seal for until they came up with something better. And they never did. Their new one has a really clever logo, see figure one. But it's still just a logo. It works, I guess, but you could really do better. And Alexandria just has a seal with the weirdest fucking boat I've ever seen. Okay. That's it for the South, but I've noticed something. The flags in the West were the most creative I've ever seen. For better, or for worse. Moving through the Midwest, we saw many genuinely inspired flags on the Western side, before Indiana and Ohio nearly made me comatose. The South shares the same problem. The flags haven't gotten better or worse exactly, but they've all trended towards boring as we've gotten further and further Northeast. There's something amiss here. Some force emanating from the far Northeast of the country that's causing flags to get more and more boring. Next time I intend to figure out what it is. That is, if I can fend off all the seals. Hi, I'm Henry, and welcome to my kitchen. This is not my kitchen. Welcome to everyone's kitchen. So I've been living on my own for most of a year now, and by on my own, I mean with Jack. Say hi, Jack. Hi. Say hi, Sabrina. Hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> she, will, she will not be appearing on, on screen. But she'll be just she'll put, a, just put a giant sensor bar on her. She'll be a constant presence in the background. Living away from home, I've learned how to do mostly adult stuff. I've gone to the store and bought things I need. I have paid bills. I have done other stuff. But one thing that I've been lacking is the ability to cook. I cannot cook at all. I don't know how to cook. I want to change that. That's what we're going to do today. Now, most will tell you that if you want to learn how to cook, you want to start with the easy stuff, the basic recipes. Once you get those down, you can move on to the more advanced stuff. Makes sense. But those people are wrong. 
is you want to learn how to cook, you have to start with the hardest recipe first. That way, once you get it down, everything else is a breeze. So I googled hardest recipe, and the first result was pufferfish. They did not sell me one. No, I don't have certification, but I... No, I... I I don't think you understand. I, I have a, I, I'm a YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. 4,000 subscribers. Four, four and a half thousand, god damn it. Second result was some Mexican dish that takes five years to cook. Now I'm perfectly willing to throw away five years of my life to make something terrible, but I don't think you guys are. Yeah. Third result was the souffle. That I can do. So on this annual episode of Cooking with Henry, I'll be making a souffle with absolutely no cooking knowledge at all. Me neither. I, I know. All right, so the recipe I'll be using is from eggs.ca. That's right, these eggs are Canadian. The basic souffle recipe, which I mean, there's nothing basic about the souffle we're really making, but it's a good start. They say that making souffle is actually a simple process despite its reputation for being difficult to make. Try adding cheese, crab, and vegetables more for, de for decadent dinner. I'll be adding cheese, crab, and vegetables for a decadent dinner. Step one. Preheat oven to 375 degrees. Or 190 Celsius for all those people living in not America out there. Step two, melt butter in medium saucepan over low heat. Stir in flour, salt, and pepper. Cook, stirring constantly until mixture is smooth and bubbly. Stir in milk all at once. Continue stirring until the mixture boils and is smooth and thickened. Do we have a medium saucepan? This, is this medium? No, it's not a saucepan. <laughs> oh. I mean, I guess that works, but... It works. Is it how much butter? What are your bets on how this is gonna go? Two yeah. tablespoons of butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, 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 the wrapper. You see, turn it, turn it, turn it. What? The wrapper, it's on the wrapper. Oh. <laughs> okay, you use a knife, and there's a cutting board. <laughs> you can figure those two steps out. You're not supposed to tell me. <laughs> I need to figure it out. Henry, I think you would have needed that, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> is there like a cutting board? Yes. Where? Oh, it's blended in with the counter. It's white. Just like you. Yes. This is not tablespoons. How many cups are in a tablespoon? You know, I was being a bit optimistic about that. I'm starting, I'm starting to agree with you more. You said how many cups are in a tablespoon? No, I, I meant the, I know the tablespoon is smart. Yeah, Jack is more clueless than me, if you can believe it. Sabrina knows what she's doing, but she's forbidden to help. I lost her desk, bro. Which is gonna happen. Okay, these aren't tablespoons. It's time to look into the cup. Henry, will this even fit in the pan? You said that wasn't how you wanted to do it. not, those weren't my words. Actually, it does make sense. You, you just bring the pepper, don't you? Yes. Is that enough? I don't know. Henry, I forgot, is Sabrina trying this afterwards or no? No, I would I was Yes. Uh, salt. Uh, I'm just eyeballing it for the, the salt and pepper. You don't, you don't pour salt, you, you just sprinkle it, don't you? That's sprinkled? Okay, imagine having an allergy to eggs. I can't relate to that. <laughs> this doesn't seem like enough material to make a thing. Yeah, I agree. Did I get some water? I don't know. We'll have Henry like put a little thing on the. Uh, no, way. Oh, yeah. Better late than never. Do you know how much? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. What? I really don't think this was meant to be done in a pan like this. Now, this is starting to look more reasonable. I would say. This chunk's flipped the surface. There's, there's less off there's, okay, I, I agree, there's less chunks. Thank you, Jack. You're a good friend. You can back up. You can get you don't hold a static camera angle. I just want I want it to be dynamic. What what I'm paying you for that. What? You're not paying me anything! You said I got fifty percent of the company I, 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 I when you started be, this channel! I, I, and you I, have I, not I, given I me shit! I won't be paying you if you keep up being a bad cameraman. I know you said that as a joke before, but now you, you don't get half. You don't, you don't own half the channel, Jack. It's my channel. It's got my name on it. You gave me fifty percent equity. It's got, it's got my name on it with a bunch more E's in it. Actually, yeah, he's renting my material. That's a good point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> quick, we just get a quick shot of your credit card, real quick. I was kidding, by the way. I'll take it. <laughs> no, it's hers. <laughs> I think this. Seems ready. There's no more chunks. The instruction isn't no chunks. The instruction is that it's thick. That looks pretty not thick. Okay, is it getting more thick? No. Step three: separate eggs. Beat yolks well. Add a quarter cup of warm sauce mixture to the egg yolks. I need a bowl for this. I know that much. Do you know 
separate eggs? Uh, separate the yolks from the... Do you know what? Uh, no. I'm just gonna try to hold yolk in my, with my finger. Fuck. Time to... It's very separated. Oh, okay, that works too, I guess. There. Now, part two. Oh, that's how you do it. It's Thank you. You shouldn't have said that so early. <laughs> Damn it. I would have done it. Do it. Do it. This is not working. It's not, it's not going through. I told you. <laughs> oh, now it's all. That's ruined. Give it away. Would you like to demonstrate your do it properly? No. Okay. Fuck. Shit. You put the shell in there! <laughs> uh, this is not separated. What? Uh, let me see that. Um... You gotta try this again. I gotta agree with you on that one. Trying this again. Ten minute break and come back or no? No. Okay. <laughs> Sounds pretty ominous. Uh, do I blame you for this? No, it's Sabrina's fault. She did this. She Nobody's did gonna this. believe you. No, she did this. She moved it to another thing and she spilled it all over the all over the thing. Where Um I no. wouldn't touch that with your What? No. Mm-hmm. Alright, thank you. Anyway, I had the great idea of refrigerating the eggs to make it easier to separate. Uh-huh. Uh you have five attempts left. I ask you once again, would you like a demonstration? How many do I need? Four. <laughs> okay. So do I just take the yolk out? I have fully broken the egg up. Okay. So? You can give me a demonstration. It's like this. Fancy. Not really. It's two egg yolks, four egg whites. Okay. And uh, oops, over there, and over there, and like that, and like that. Oh wait, I don't, I don't need another one. Uh, what, would you, would you like a gift? I'm good. Do you like a gift? I mean, I can't believe you're so rude. Oh uh, boy, it's not a great break. Yeah, I agree. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> it works! Can you tell me it's not working? How about this gift? It's got more shell to it. Good, thank you though. You? No. I'll be giving away this egg to, to, the, to the top commenter on this video. I'll, I'll give this egg to the, per to the first person who buys my merchandise. I've got a tap tree with my face on it, I've got a bed with my face on it, I've got a shower coat with my face on it, I've got a mini skirt with my face on it. That one is at 200% markup. It's, I hope you understand. Uh, buy it now at uh, redbubble.com. Uh, 1400. You guys on camera, Jack. What? Did you put soap on that? There's only just shove here. Question stands. Uh, where's the whisk? Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. You don't need the wire, it's wireless. That's oh, it's wireless, okay. Is this the button? Yes. Get them on camera. Now that's some good whisking. Now that's what I call whisk. Just call me Whiskey Boy or me and my cat. Ooh boy. It's got a skin to it. Oh god. Perfect. Step four, combine yolk mixture with the remaining sauce, blending thoroughly. If desired, add finely chopped filling ingredients, stirring into white sauce until blended. Mix this together first, and then you add Ah, I see. Thank you. For the unsolicited advice, you're not, you're not supposed to help me. Okay. It stands, by the way. What? Oh. Ah, just like me. Look. <laughs> Yeah, you're standing. I agree. Yes, it's, one of, it's one of my many talents. Doesn't that look great? It's not done yet. I know. It's but not done yet. It <laughs> it's not done yet. Now that looks like something that could possibly be edible soon. So this crab uh, is from uh, Fishman's Marketplace in Western Eugene, Oregon. Uh, it's good. They go out uh, every day. They go out to, to to the ocean. They get 
proud to bring it back for you to eat. It's very fresh. It's, it's been my fridge for the last two days, but that's very fresh. Uh, this cheese uh, is, is Tillamook cheddar cheese. I've lived in Oregon for 19 years. Tillamook is the best cheddar cheese. You can believe me there. This is a carrot. It's just a, it's a, it's a carrot. This is a fucking carrot. I don't know how to cut crab. This seems wrong. The look on your face tells me that this is wrong. Okay. A lot uh, of crap. Who wants to tell Henry he's holding the knife upside down? Seems like you did. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's fine. This seems finely chopped enough. Yeah, you, you, you believe what you want to believe. <laughs> Sabrina is covering her face and walking away. Yeah. You know what, I think that's enough crap. This seems like the red mound cheese. Believe it or not, I'm not an expert on like quantities of cheese. You're gonna have to be on your own for this okay. one. Okay, I am an expert on quantities of cheese. Okay. That's the right amount. They call me Henry Boyer, carrot expert. I thought they called you whiskey or whatever. They call me many things. You gotta wash your carrots before you cook them because they are dirty. They are dirty and need to be cleaned. And then you chop it with the knife that still has crab on it. Yes, the right way around. Is it? Yes. <laughs> okay. It is. Um, I mean, you can talk as long as it's not helpful. <laughs> what is he doing wrong, actually? I'm like... You're supposed to get the skin off. Oh, oh there's skin. The outer layers that are coated in dirt and... I washed it. You're also eating it. It's fine. Yes, so are you. I am not touching it. <laughs> what if it's really good? No. What if it, but what if? Step five, beat egg whites and cream of tartar in large bowl until stiff but not dry. Fold some of the egg whites into the sauce to make it lighter. Then gently and thoroughly fold the sauce into the remaining egg whites. Is this the stuff you were talking about? Cream of tartar? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all liquid. I didn't expect it to struggle with knife. There's a seal on this. I don't have finger, I bite them. I can't get, Sabrina, I need your fingernails. But no, I don't need fingernails. Your fingernails are useless to me. Sabrina, I need your fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fingernail. I said, I said half of this, so no one over pour. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. It's like half. Okay. This goes in here. I need to wash my hands again. Get some camera. I, I skipped part of a step, so I'm, I'm blending this now. Ah. You might want to step back. Me. Yum, this is what I want in my stomach. It smells like something. Alright, now it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's looking how I want it to look. It's looking like food. That is a bit delusional if any of you guys haven't noticed yet. I'm perfectly, I'm perfectly sane. Then gently but thoroughly fold the sauce into a fold. I don't know what it means by fold. How do you fold a liquid? Jack, do you know how to pull the liquid? This seems like a physical impossibility to me. Are you desperate? No. What? Precisely! They call me the Whisk Man. Oh, you were whiskey. Why, why do they call you so many things? They call me uh, the Whisk Meister. Doesn't smell really bad. It's crap. Cool spiky again, I like that. It looks like it's been in the bottom of the sea for for five years. Okay, if something was at the bottom of the sea for five years, would you want to eat it? Bring crab. crab. Oh, I mean. Step six: carefully pour into four cups to flare casserole dish. There's not four cups. There are four cups, so. <laughs> they were on a pan for a reason. No helping, but thank you. I'm only saying it because it's my stuff. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, you got five dollars out of this. Yeah, you know what? Use it for more. Use it for race. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Next for two dollars. <laughs> Fuck you. This is your. This is your second employee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show it off. Uh, 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 two dollars? Okay, it's fine. You can keep it. You get to keep the change. All right. I've been with the company since the since its inception. You've not given me anything. I don't think this is enough for. All four of these. Oh, one of these is gonna be very chunky. Uh huh. 
You get that chunky one. Oh boy, that's a lot. I'm not eating this. Why not? Doesn't look delicious. Step seven. Bake in preheated 375 degree oven until puffed and lightly browned, 20 to 25 minutes or until done. Serve immediately. Okay. How long does this take? 20 minutes. Or until you start smelling smoke. Yes, thank you. This is why you get paid and he doesn't. <laughs> what are you guys' expectations? Because you're, you're, you're both going to be eating this, right? No, I'm not touching that thing. What if it's really good? Disgusting. What if, on the off chance, like this is one of those stories where someone like makes a mistake, a mistake while cooking and actually discovers a brand new food that everyone loves? Good for you. I'm not trying it. <laughs> Careful. All right. All right. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, fine. It did rise. It's still liquidy. It's not done yet. No, it has to be brown before I take it out. Okay, we're gonna wait a little bit longer then. It did rise. I was not expecting that, honestly. Are you turning the out? Oh. <laughs> Hello. At the very least, does this qualify as a souffle in your eyes? No. Really? Yes. Why not? Because you didn't do it properly. I didn't ask you if it was a good souffle. No, because the eggs weren't whipped at all. Where? Just stiff feet. No, not at all. Didn't come close. Well, it rose. Good job. It's all right, like, thank you. I, that means it's a lot to me. All right, now it is actually done because you can see that it is brown on top. So let's see the fruits of my labor. One of them is still kind of bubbling. I'm not gonna eat that one. Actually, they're all kind of still bubbling. Henry, I don't know if this is actually safe to eat. I don't think this is a good idea. It could look worse. It could look worse. You're right there. Is it ready to eat? Um. Not eat it. Okay. <laughs> You're taking a photo. Oh, don't. Do not. This is not. I'll file this against the police later. Evidence. All right. <laughs> of what? You poisoned me. So, how do you guys think this went? For me, it's about as expected. I don't know. Okay. I need a little bit of, oh. Mm. Yeah, it's just egg. I mean, it's, it's edible. That's fine, it's just egg. Okay. You want some? No. No. Why not, you don't like eggs? No, I don't like eggs. Oh, okay. I especially don't. Oh, there's the crab. Not, not terrible. You should have some. Have the whole thing. Yeah. No, it's still bubbling. It will give me salmonella. This is not a This is a very cheesy Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> well, then I proved my thesis right. Once a once mattress souffle, everything else is a breeze, including very cheesy Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire pudding is the easiest. You say anyway. once you've mastered a souffle, you haven't mastered a souffle. <laughs> okay. Well, I've mastered something else. I've mastered my new thing. I, 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 I have I have invented I have invented a new food. Jack, I'll give you I'll give you the honor of naming it. No. All right, this is a no. And here's how you can make your own no. How to make your own no. Preheat oven to 375 degrees. Melt two tablespoons of butter in a small frying pan over low heat. Stir in two tablespoons of flour. Sprinkle some salt and pepper. Just fucking eyeball it. Add almost three quarters of a cup of milk, but make sure to get some on the stove top first. Stir until there's less chunks. Ruin a perfectly good egg because Sabrina gave you a strainer. Have your friends spill a bunch of sauce in the stove and blame it on you. Sabrina's the true bad cook in this video. Ruin another egg with your grimy little fingers, you sack of shit. Actually separate the eggs. Add a quarter cup of the sauce to the yolks and whisk! Add a quarter cup of the whites, too, making sure to spill all of the stove again. It's a vital part of the process. Whisk! Cut up crab meat to the very best of your ability. Make sure to hold the knife upside down for the best cutting action. Pour just a little bit of it in after having second thoughts. Add the right amount of cheese. Add a sliced carrot. The skin is the best part. Whisk! Officiate the marriage between the yolk mixture and the white mixture. Bend the laws of physics to fold a liquid. Pour the liquid into something. Make sure one of them is extra chunky. Bake until mostly solid. Serve never. When wood ash mixes with water, lye is created. When lye mixes with a fat, soap is created. Soap is a tool meant for cleaning oneself. It was designed to be useful, not to be enjoyed. So yeah, just an all-around nice guy. Got my picture shaking with him, then he signed a triangle, and that's how I met Pythagoras. Wow. That's great, honey. We're so happy for you. So, almost done with your first year of college, huh? 
Yeah, soon I'll be out of here and back in Portland with you. So are you going to miss being at college? Well, kind of. I mean, I miss you, and I miss Portland, but I'm going to miss the independence that comes with being at college, you know? I mean, like, last week I, like, I ran out of soap, so I had to go to the store and buy my own soap for the first time in my life. Buying soap wasn't too much for you to handle, was it? <laughs> no, 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 it was fine. Actually, funny story, when I checked out, the lady told me to enjoy my soap, which, I mean, how exactly do I enjoy soap? I mean, it's a pretty neutral experience, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of a weird thing to say, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, I've been doing fine. Uh, we have to go now, but tell Jack we say hi. My parents say hi. Hi. Uh, love you, Henry. We can't wait to see you again. Love you too. Bye. Enjoy the soap. <sighs> you okay, dude? I'm fine. It's been three weeks and four days since I felt at peace. The lady said, hello. I said, hello. She said, you can tap or swipe your card now. I said, okay. She asked, would you like a receipt? I said, sure. She said, enjoy your soap. And I said, thanks, I will. I could have said anything. I could have said, thanks, I'll try. Thanks, I'll do my best. God knows those would have been true. But instead, I made a promise. Thanks, I will. A promise I have not been able to keep. I tried to wash myself with it, everywhere I could, seeing if any place in my body would truly be enjoyable. None were. I didn't dislike the soap, but I would be lying if I said I enjoyed it. It was an overwhelmingly neutral soap experience. So I tried other things. Soap art, soap vandalism, soap philanthropy. Nothing worked. I didn't enjoy them at all. Maybe I could have, if I was doing these silly activities for the fun of it. But I was doing them in service of a debt, a promise that I had left unkept, and the guilt was weighing on me. It wasn't just that I couldn't enjoy the soap. I started to not enjoy anything anymore. Desperately, I asked around. I looked on Reddit and YouTube. The results were less than helpful. What do you mean, Dirty Queen? I started to grow resentful. Why did that lady have to impose this challenge upon me? What did she have to gain? What interest does she have about whether or not my soap experiences are enjoyable? It's none of her goddamn business. No. No, she had her reasons, I'm sure. I'm sure she asks everyone to enjoy their soap. I'm just the only one stupid enough to tell her I would. I hate this soap. I hate this soap. I wish goddamn soap never existed. It's gone. <coughs> Jack! Jack, what, what happened to you? Henry, I'm dying of hygiene-related illnesses. Hygiene? Jack! Just use soap! What is that? You mean soup? I tried that before. It made things worse. No, Jack, not soup. Soap! Haven't heard of soap? If something called soap existed... <coughs> I'd know what it is. Henry? Henry! I'll come back. With soap. How the fuck do I make soap? How long has it been since my words erased soap from existence? Out in this wilderness, I have lost track. It could be as long as six, even seven hours. My attempts to recreate it have yielded no results. My concerns about soap enjoyment seem so small now. Clearly, the lady was teaching me a lesson. Lesson learned. But I have doomed this world to a future of dirt and grime. Here in the wild, I have started to revert back to my primal survival instincts. I'm sorry, Jack. I have let you down.
so. Henry, you're back. Jack, you're not looking so good. It's too late for me, Henry. The dirt and grime have already infiltrated every part of my body. Death is waiting at my door, and I have no choice but to answer him. No. So. Henry, I'm not hungry. <laughs> I... I feel better. Yes! I knew it would work! How did this happen? With the power of soap. Uh, well, I enjoy the soap. You know what, Jack? I enjoy the soap, too. Head, shoulders, knees, and knees, knees, and knees. Head, shoulders, knees, and knees, knees, and knees. And eyes, and eyes, and eyes, and eyes, and Head, eyes, shoulders, and knees, and knees, knees, and knees. And knees, and knees. knees. Hey, neighbor. Hey, how have you been? Yeah. Oh, me too. Nice weather we're having. Speak for yourself. Who else can I speak for? The truth. I see. How's the wife? What wife? Yours. Oh, that wife. She left. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I it's okay. We all make mistakes. You think so? Yes. I do too. Well, that's one thing we have in common. I wonder who else thinks so. Hey, wife. Do you think so? She's not really the thinking type. Hasn't been since the war. What war? All of them. Hey, I have a secret. Really? Where'd you get it? I got it as a gift. From who? From Santa. Santa Claus? Santa Fe. Ah, oh, the iron one. Yeah. Nice weather we're having. How long is it supposed to stay this way? I don't know. Let me check the news. Oh my god. What? I just remembered something. That's good. It is. What do you remember? Irrelevant. I see. Wait, you never told me that secret. Oh yeah. Let's both say it on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Happy New Year! Year. Yes! I am the free tag champion. Okay, you win. Yay! What do I win? A new car. Oh boy! Where is it? That's part of the fun. What's the other part? That's for you to find out. So, what music have you been listening to? I've been getting into 80s music. I haven't heard that. Is it good? No. Oh. Well, nice weather we're having. Yeah. You know what I always say. That's right, I do. That's what I like about you. Hey, I have a secret. Oh, really? That's nice. I love you. I thought you'd never ask. I didn't. <laughs> well, I say yes. What is your wife gonna think? She doesn't. Previously on shitty fu- I mean city- I mean shit- God damn- I'm gonna go state by state across the country, judging every city on my way. This is what we in the industry call a seal on a bed sheet. It seems like a wave of good flags has gone across the middle of the country. And Chesapeake, Newport News, and Virginia Beach are just a herd of seals on bed sheets again. We've all trended towards boring as we've gotten further and further northeast. Some force emanating from the far northeast of the country. Next time, I intend to figure out what it is. Hi, welcome back to City Flags, where I'm sitting in a bush. I'm in the northeastern United States, as you can tell by the untapped wilderness behind me. I came from the west, with high hopes for exciting vexillology. But as I've gotten more and more northeast, it's become clear that there just aren't a lot of flags in this part of the country worth giving a damn. This isn't normal! Where I'm from, flags can be really good, or really bad, or somewhere in between. But there's variety. Here, I can't take two steps without being attacked by a seal. Clearly, there's something in the northeast making all these flags so boring. Today, I intend to find it, and fix it. Ready? Let's cross the Potomac. Alright, calm before the storm. Welcome to the nation's capital. Despite that big talk I just gave, this is actually really good. Enjoy it, because this is gonna get more and more rare as we head further in. The flag of Washington is, plain and simple, the Washington family coat of arms stretched into a rectangle. And it works! It's a simple, effective flag. Part of me wants to complain that there's so much more to the city than Big George over there, but the people of DC love it. They display it proudly, and they rally behind it in their fight to finally get some goddamn representation up in this house. So this flag's been doing its job really, really well. No complaints. Looks like the entity is powers weakest near the edge of the Northeast. Let's head into Maryland with caution. To talk about the flag of Baltimore, we first have to acknowledge this garish motherfucker. 
adapted directly from the coat of arms of Mr. Bear in Baltimore, is hideous and terrifying, and Marylanders love it, and I love it for them. Baltimore takes one of these corners and slaps a battle monument on it. While the monument is a bit too detailed for how small it is, look at those little tiny griffins. I can't say it's not an effective design. It just makes sense that the flag of Maryland's largest city is a segment of the state flag. And it really couldn't be the flag of anywhere else, unless Boise decided to do a little plagiarism. Annapolis wishes it could be so cool. And it really tried. The crown is for Queen Anne. It's her polis. And the flowers represent the English Tudors and the Scottish Stuarts. The Latin on the banner translates to, I have lived free and will die so. A kick-ass motto that's only kind of brought down by the fact that the rest of the flag is so hardcore monarchist. So this flag has some kick-ass symbolism that's only kind of brought down by the fact that it doesn't really look very good. Hey, at least not a seal. Where are they? Welcome to Ocean City, Maryland. The number two ocean city and number of my grandmas. Come relax by the beach, and admire a flag that is so simple but effective in its symbolism that I don't even have to explain it. Yeah, you get it. So the flags in DC and Maryland are actually pretty good. Not still to be found. Maybe this is a false alarm. Maybe we can go home. Delaware! The flag of Dover, Delaware is a diamond containing a seal containing a coat of arms, a seal containing a coat of arms, and a something. <laughs> <sighs> that was a rowdy one. This one's Swedish! Hey, did you know the Delaware Valley was first colonized by the Swedish for 17 years until the Dutch took it over until the English took it over? Wilmington knows, and is so proud of this fact that it's willing to commit plagiarism to show it off. What better way to honor your estranged parents than by slapping your ugly seal on their flag? <sighs> okay, this might get dangerous. But luckily I brought along my French as bodyguard slash cameraman Jack, who's educated in the ancient art of... What's it called? Wushu, or Kung Fu if you're white. And it's not really a fighting thing, it's more of an art type of thing. Okay, but can you protect me with it? No. Yes. Okay, let's go on to Pennsylvania. The flag of Pittsburgh is- ah! Wait! That's a coat of arms, not a seal. Yeah, yeah, back off. I'll see you in Erie. Coat of arms are not seals. They can work well on flags. They can also work not well on flags. This one? It's okay. This is the coat of arms of Billiam Pitt, namesake of this burg. It's got a black castle on top too, just cause it's cool. I gotta say, I like this flag. The black yellow black tricolor is unique and imposing, and coincidentally, works really well for a city in the heart of coal country. There's also a version that ditches the coat of arms and just leaves the castle, which I like about the same. So surprisingly, not a bad flag. Okay, now to Erie. <gasps> hey, did you know that Erie is a city in America? No dumbass, it's obviously in Thailand. Erie, this isn't even your own seal. It's Pennsylvania's. Somehow you found a way to make a seal even more disappointing. This is a very boring flag. But Erie County has a flag that's, well, more interesting, at least. Look, I'm a sucker for when flags secretly double as maps, but this little tumor is not necessary. Just stick to the triangle. Your triangle. Why complicate things? Harrisburg's flag decides to cram as much as it can into this tiny itty bitty keystone, so it has room to write Harrisburg PA! The yellow shit here was grabbed from various coats of arms from the 18th century, arranged in the weirdest way possible. William Penn has circles, so we gotta put a circle on there. Yes, that's the real reason, there's a circle on there. And I like how you couldn't come up with a better way to represent being the state capital than by putting the capital building on the flag. Let me tell you, I would not be praising DC's flag if it looked like this. Lancaster, really leaning into your namesake there. Like, really, really leaning in. One rose was enough, guys. You don't have to give us four. They do actually have some symbolism on there that isn't just teabooing over a town in Northwest England, but they hit it really, really small so I can't see it. Scranton, huh? Is that even a seal? Dumb Scranton, can't even seal right. You got Adams? Yeah, bitch, so do I. You don't see me bragging about it. Would you believe me if I said this was an improvement? Like, I guess this looks better? But did they ever consider that they had to make more than one of these? How the hell do you mass produce this in 1907? All right, all that's left is Philadelphia. You know what? Give it to me. I'm doing it myself. Welcome to Philadelphia. Philadelphia was the first city in America to make its own flag, and boy was it a trendsetter in the field of disappointment. Blue and yellow represent Sweden and the coat of arms represents apathy. I don't know why they didn't just go the Washington route and do the coat of arms of William Penn for their flag. That would have been good enough. But nowadays, I go with something more representative of Philadelphia today, like a hoagie, or mispronunciation of the word water. It's pronounced water. But in all seriousness though, you've got Liberty Bell. Just, I mean, just, I'm leaving. Ah uh, shit, is this New Jersey? Welcome to Ocean City, New Jersey, home of the world's second largest ocean. This is where all the Philadelphians go on their beach days. So it's fitting that the flag is just Philadelphia if you went. 
Credit where credit is due, the stripes represent the bay, the beach, and the sea. And the seal has a clear visible anchor for the ocean. But Ocean City isn't a port town, it's a tourist town. An anchor isn't what comes to mind. It should be a beach umbrella, or a seagull, or my grandma. Although, seeing as this is a touristy beach town, if it wasn't this, it would probably be a logo flag. So you know what? This is fine. Ben, what are your thoughts on the Ocean City flag? It's trash. I have raised you well. All right, and here I am in Atlantic City. Man, the difference five miles can make. I assume their flag means the same thing. Bay, beach, Bocean. Hard to tell since they never specified. Maybe they're just big Guatemala fans. But really, this is the best you could do as Atlantic City? The gambling capital of the East? You couldn't even put on some gold? We're getting closer. Jack, get ready to put that wushu. I already told you it's not for fighting. Jack, Jack, I saw Kung Fu Panda. If you're anything like that, we're gonna be fine. I'm not- On to the rest of New Jersey. So, normally I try to avoid suburbs when talking about flags, since they don't tend to have their own civic identities. I really like this corner of the log. But New Jersey is a state made entirely of suburbs, so... I guess I'll give an exception. Camden, New Jersey's flag is this uninspiring piece. I didn't know they had triangles in New Jersey. But the thing is, I can't find any evidence anyone's ever flown this flag. Like, there are no pictures of a physical version of this on the internet. They don't even fly it in front of their city hall. Question, if a flag is specified by law, but no one's ever flown it, is it really a flag? Answer? I don't know. Careful, we're in the demilitarized zone from north and south of Jersey, AKA Trenton. Trenton likes horses, is what this is telling me. They've got a horse head and some nice wheat for it to munch on. They really like horses. What else can I say? Okay, it's time, go, 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 go! Newark's flag is a coat of arms and that's it. I like how the Lady of Justice is sitting down. She's just chilling, not even looking at the Lady of Liberty. Don't bother her, she's on her break. Look, you've gotta find joy anywhere you can in this place. Elizabeth, New Jersey has 24 words on its flag. Might as well just have a city essay instead. And Jersey City, let Jersey prosper. No. Corporate seal? You fucking sellout. I'm starting to notice a trend with these basic tricolors with seals or coats in the middle. Pittsburgh was good, Philadelphia was less good, and Jersey City is discovering new levels of mediocrity. All right, we've gone through the depths of New Jersey, and are finally here. New York City! Ugh! Are you kidding me? New York, New York. The city that never sleeps. The Big Apple. The city. The biggest city in America, the economic capital of the world, home of Frank Sinatra, Al Pacino, and Grover. Empire State Building, Brooklyn Bridge, Lady Motherfucking Liberty. You've got the biggest history, most iconic culture, and the most to say about yourself of any city in this country. You don't need to ask someone if they're from New York, they'll tell you. Millions of Americans can trace their ancestry back to someone who arrived in your harbor in search of a better life. You're New Fucking York. Everyone around the world knows your name. You can't say that about Trenton. And this is your flag. Great. The same basic tricolor template with an overcomplicated seal in the middle. Okay, let's do an experiment. Someone from New York, walk around Lower Manhattan for me. Let's say, half an hour. Count how many New York City flags you see. I'll be generous. You can count anything that makes reference to the flag. Anything that recognizably uses the flag in its design is fair game. No government buildings, they're obligated to use it. This ain't Camden. Now, someone from Chicago, the New York of the Midwest, do the same. Half an hour, downtown Chicago, anything that references the flag counts. What you'll find is that the Chicago flag is everywhere, and the New York flag is hard to come by. It's not that New Yorkers aren't proud of their city. Have you met one? It's just the symbol they're given to express that sucks ass. Okay, fine, look at the flag. The blue, white, and orange come from the old Dutch flag, because even old New York was once New Amsterdam. Why they changed it? I can say, the English liked it better that way. I'll admit, not a bad start. The seal, America, Indian, Dutch, 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 Dutch. There's nothing wrong with nodding into your history, but this flag isn't so much nodding as it is vibrating its head aggressively. There is nothing on this flag to represent New York as the Titan it is today. I'm gonna say it, this is the most disappointing flag in America. If one of them needs to change, it should be this one. Then like, 70% of the rest of them. The boroughs have flags too. Real quick, all the same problems, seal on a bedsheet, seal on a bedsheet, but looks like money, blatant plagiarism, and a little more interesting. Not good, but... You know, interesting. All right, let's look at Albany's flag. And it's the same thing, isn't it? It's the same thing. Yep. Yep. Just kind of turn 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Syracuse, another boring seal flag. Ah, oh, fuck off. Oh, it fucked off. Get out of here. Bald guy coming in with a brand new flag. Gotta say, two shades of blue, getting kind of tropey, but I will fucking take it. 
Dutch colors, six pointed star for the six nations of the Iroquois, and a white triangle for salt and snow. This is a perfectly adequate flag. Might be the last time we see that. Rochester, it's just NYC again, but you couldn't find any orange dye. You do have an alternate flag though, which would be pretty good if you didn't have to put Flower City, Flower City, Rochester, New York, restricted. Buffalo. Ah, holy shit! Not a fan of the seal, noticing a distinct lack of buffaloes on there. But you know what? I'll give it a pass, because that lightning coming off the seal is pretty damn cool. Alright, time for new and improved England. We still don't know where the anomaly is, but granted the ever increasing number of boring flags, we're getting pretty close. Let's see Connecticut. Bridgeport. Stamford. Shit. Hartford. God. Waterbury. Fucking. New Haven. Norwalk. Damn it! This wasn't cherry picking. These are the six largest cities in Connecticut. <sighs> that was a lot of seals. Why didn't you wishu them? I already told you, wushu is like aggressive dancing. It's not Jack, meant for- Jack, I've seen Kung Fu Panda 2. Let's see if Rhode Island is any better. Their state flag is. I'm expecting something nautical? <laughs> no. Seal of the City of Providence. What cheer? That's what I'm saying! I never get why some cities feel the need to put both the date of their founding and the date of their incorporation on their flag. Just pick one. No, I knew the day I was founded, the day I was incorporated, the day I was discovered, the day my founder was born, the day I found a cool rock, the day that I'll die, the day I found another cool rock. Actually, just pick zero. Providence is Rhode Island's only real city. So I finally crossed something off my bucket list. On to Massachusetts. Maybe, eh, I have no faith at this point. Boston, I would like to say I expected better, but I don't like lying. No matter how much Latin you write on yourself, it's not gonna make you look any more fancy. Look, it makes sense for Boston to have an old-fashioned looking flag. One of the top cities in early America, the hotbed of the revolution, a harbor town, a Harvard town, and a city that likes to think of itself as a bit more sophisticated than the rest. The issue is, this isn't an old-fashioned looking flag. It's a 20th century idea of what an old-fashioned flag would look like. An illustration of the skyline from the water, and right all over it in serif font Latin. You want to know what an old-fashioned, sophisticated flag actually looks like? Here's Oxford. Here's Cambridge. Your brother's across the pond. This flag is just trying too hard and coming up short. The second most disappointing city flag in the country. Not as much as New York, because you aren't as cool. Want to prove me wrong? Change your flag! What about the rest of Massachusetts? Springfield! That's a person. Nice cape. Probably looks like a nothing when it's flying, though. Worcester is known as the heart of the Commonwealth, because it's in the middle of the state. I guess that makes Boston the brain and Springfield the rectum. Anyway, dear god this flag is on the nose. Actually, it's on the heart. Fuck you! At least make it anatomically accurate. Are there any good flags in this state? Plymouth? Nope. Lowell? Art is the handmaid of human good. Noble sentiment. Something tells me you're half-assing it though. Brain tree? Nope. Come on, it was so obvious. Nantucket? Nantucket! Fucking finally! You see this? This is how you make a flag that does justice to the place it represents. For the unaware, Nantucket is an island town off the coast of Massachusetts. If you are a rich northeasterner who longs for the waves, it's probably where you spend your summers. It's the very model of a maritime New England town. And for a while, it was the whaling capital of the world. As an Oregonian, I can relate to the whale bloodlust, although we tend to be a bit more theatrical. Anyway, the flag fits the personality of the town perfectly. The swallow tail design is begging to be put in the back of a boat. And the way this thing doubles as a compass and a harpoon? Perfect. No complaints. This flag manages to tell you everything Nantucket is in one quick glance. That's genuinely impressive. Well, Massachusetts, you made a good flag. Can you go for two? No. Oh boy. This is tiring. I mean, we gotta keep going, but like... It's taking a lot out of me. I Isn't there a place somewhere that's just like, flown under the radar, that's managed to have Good city flags, even in this part of the country? I have a soft spot for Vermont. Coming from the Pacific Northwest, the New England states always felt like our cousins across the country. You know, lots of forest, progressive politics. Embarrassingly white. The difference is that they got real jobs. While we're out here dicking around in forests, exploding whales and mountains, having a gay old time. Meanwhile, Vermont felt like the chill, laid-back cousin who's more in our lane. You made Ben and Jerry's and Bernie Sanders? You're all right in our book. Bring some maple syrup over, and let's dick around on mountains together. Colorado is also a cousin. He's the cool one who takes us snowboarding. Uh, Henrik? Henrik? Oh, sorry, I got lost in the metaphor. So I'm really proud of our little guy Vermont for having the best city flags in all of- Wait, no, they don't really do cities, do they? For having the best town flags in all of New England. 
Let's check them out. Burlington is the largest settlement in Vermont. Their flag used to be straight out of a coloring book, but in 2017, they replaced it with this pointy guy. The thing is, they show the same thing. Sky, snow, mountains, more snow, lake. But this looks like it should be flying from a pole. And this looks like your new computer here with Microsoft Paint. One criticism, the flag represents the view across Lake Champlain, which is perfect symbolism, but it does mean that the Green Mountains aren't in the Green Mountain State. They're in New York. Okay, criticism over. Montpelier is the capital of Vermont, with a staggering this many people. Like its big burly brother, it used to have a garbage flag, but it shed it like a butterfly in 2017, as all butterflies do after being publicly shamed by Roman Mars. They've got Green Mountains for Vert Mont, and I'm sorry, I know the 14 stars are for Vermont being the 14th state, but you should really be expecting a cease and desist from across the Atlantic pretty soon. Despite that, I gotta say, it's a pretty good flag. Alright, after those flags, it's feeling a lot better. Why well, don't keep going? We still haven't found the anomaly, but we have to be getting close. There's only two states left, so New Hampshire, let's go. Manchester, New Hampshire has a seal on a bed sheet. What else is new? Like the cities of Vermont, they tried to change it to something else in 2017. But unlike Vermont, the people voted 80% against it. Ugh, this is why Vermont is cooler than you. To be fair, these other designs are pretty boring. One blogger I found likes the seal flag because it's got a centrifugal governor on it. You know what? I agree. Make a full-on centrifugal flag. I am not even close to kidding. Conquered. I find it amusing how a city whose name means harmony between groups, many parts working together in unison to go forward as a united whole, can't come up with more than a carriage. No horse, just carriage. They couldn't get the trademark rights to the horse. <sighs> Portsmouth. Ah, it's a bad one! Not only is this a seal on a white bedsheet and literally nothing else, but this seal is one of the worst I've ever seen on a flag. Ever. <laughs> there are so, so many densely packed fine details and contrasting colors, and it's so small that I can't see anything. This may be the most boring, uninspired flag in the entire country. The mother of all seals on the mother of all bedsheets. <laughs> Animal abuse is wrong. Ah, uh, there you are. Is it you? Are you the force? The one making these bad, boring steel flags across this corner of the country? No, do not be afraid. I am not your enemy. I am a fellow victim. Explain. I am the immortal spirit of national New Hampshire. I was on track to have a creative, non-boring flag before the beast you have been hunting put a stop to it. You mean, Nashua was actually gonna have a good flag? That's not what I said. So, as the immortal spirit of Nashua, New Hampshire said, Nashua doesn't have a flag. But also as she said, Mr. Ronald Nashua tried to make one a few years back. It's... interesting. A flag made by someone who's never heard of symbolism. It's got the name on it, boring, but Ron also decided to put on his favorite four Nashua buildings. A school, for education. The Nashua Manufacturing Building, where they manufacture all the Nashuas. It's where I was created. The stadium, for sports. And the Jackson Mills Building, which apparently housed Sanders for a long time. I like the purple. As bad as that flag is, it would still be the best one in New Hampshire. But what happened? Ron Nashua took his flag to the Nashua City Hall. But there was a sudden flash of light, and no one has seen it since. I believe Maine got to him. Maine? The culprit in Maine? The culprit is Maine. What? When Maine rose from the sea, it brought with it nothing but horrible, boring city flags. Every single flag was nothing but a seal on a solid color background. Sounds familiar. Every other state laughed. Their city flags may not have been good. But at least they tried. At least they were somewhat creative, varying effects. So what happened then? Maine became so enraged by this that it decided everyone else's city flags must suck as much as Maine's. That forest you've been speaking about, the one that's making my flags boring? It was Maine. Exactly. Immortal Spirit National New Hampshire! It got to me. I knew I couldn't hold out forever. What? But I... Oh, defeat Maine for the sake of flags everywhere. 
Okay. That was already the plan, actually, but... Now it come in twice as hard. All right, here we are. You ready, Jack? I'm not coming. What? I saw what happened to the immortal spirit of Nashua, New Hampshire. You can do what you want, but I'm not risking my life for some rectangles. But Jack, I need you for protection. Let me guess, you've seen Kung Fu Panda 3? No, actually, I haven't seen that one. Fine, I'll do it myself, for the sake of three flags everywhere. And by everywhere, I mean America. Because I'm not doing this for any other countries. Because I'm running out of jokes. It's time to end this. It's time to go to Maine. Shit. I can't believe we just did that. Henry, we just burnt down a fucking orphanage. What the hell did we do that for? Jack, Jack, remember. We only did this because it was funny. Okay, yeah, it was pretty fucking funny. Okay, now shut up until we get to safety. This is the absolute worst time to be caught. Hey! What are you two kids doing? Uh, slinking? I can see that. I used to slink all the time when I was your age. Now I've got a job and a family. Never time to slink anymore. Enjoy it while you can, kids. Oh, by the way, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, that's right. There's a fire a couple blocks north of here. It's a pretty grim scene. Firefighters fighting fire, a pair of paramedics preparing to be medics. It's pretty fucking funny. I know, right? Yeah. So you guys know about it? Nope, never heard of it. Never. Really? We didn't even know orphanages could do that. Look, I've got a lot of respect for the teenagers think we can bring orphanages community. I'm not gonna try to incriminate you. I just wanna know, do you have any idea what could have caused it? No. Cigarette. Candle tip, overpowered powered strip, lightning strike, barbecue. Left the oven on. Blow torch, firework, Christmas lights that didn't work, two sticks, broken Vic, attacked by fire bomb. We didn't start the fire, it was always burning since it started burning. We didn't start the fire, no, we didn't light it, and we didn't light it. Fire leader, fire flower, molotovs, cocktail hour, flint and steel, flamethrower, amateur, glass board. Tectonic activity, demonic ability, magnified sunbeam, impromptu smoke machine. Space heater, bare wire, dry season, bonfire, note seven, gas leak, faulty blowtorch technique, gasoline, ethanol, red hot nickel ball, monoxide, circuit fried, how else could the kids have died? We didn't start the fire. No, it wasn't burning till it started burning. We didn't start the fire. No, we didn't light it, and we didn't light it. Allergen, old cable, he bought you with wood and table, power line, meets a kite, burn it on an outer light. Lindsay Boyle, arsonists. Arsonists? What? We did start the fire. No, it wasn't burning until we started it burning. We did start the fire. Yes, we did light it, and. And we did light it. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know Make my wish come true All I want for Christmas Is... A pipe bomb! Previously on City... Clearly, there's something in the Northeast, making all these flags so boring. <laughs> the culprit's in Maine? The culprit is Maine. You can do what you want, but I'm not risking my life for some rectangles. It's time to go to Maine. Here we are, Maine. The source of all the country's shitty flags. I mean, city flags. I mean, 
Wait, no, I was right the first time. Man, it's cold here. Almost like several months passed in the blink of an eye. Luckily, I was getting my famous green jacket up my ass, just in case. It's fine. If all goes well, Maine will be defeated by sundown. And the entire country will finally have good, creative city flags. And it'll be all thanks to me, and not the motherfucker Jack who abandoned me at the border. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I am armed with my hometown flag in my chest, and a fire in my heart. I'm gonna beat you the only way I know how. By making fun of your flags and they go away. Bangor. What can I say? This is the most generic ass seal I've ever seen. City of Bangor. Incorporated February something something something. I don't care. That's the job of your tour guides, not your flag. Bangor, I know you can do better than this. You're a pretty cool town, I think. Never been. You give off cool town vibes. But your flag gives off, we put this together in five minutes vibes. <coughs> you! Lewiston. Maine. Had fun with that text formatting, huh? Let's try a few others. Bam! Whoa! Kapow! That was fun. Other than your funky words, there's nothing remotely special about your flag. Not even your flying train and flooding building. Yeah, good luck with that. Ugh, ugh. See that, Maine? That's where I think of your seals. Send all you want, I will keep tearing them down. <sighs> Alright, let's deal with these guys. Wells. I see you've gone the Scranton route, having all the same problems as a seal without actually having a seal. It's a sea lion. Proud of our past, ready for our future. What future? Lisbon. All you had to say about yourself was that Indians once lived there. And you couldn't even get the Indian right. Eh, don't worry too much. You're only off by about 1500 miles. We've all made that mistake before. Oh, what's that? We haven't? Why didn't you say so? <coughs> Yarmouth. You know, this actually wouldn't be too bad if it wasn't for the name and year. Doing this shows that you don't think anyone actually knows who you are, which, I mean, it's true, but you don't have to act like it. Show some confidence. <coughs> Green bush. Living and growing. That's cute. Not a good flag, but cute. 1834 to 1984. Wait, what happened in 1984? Spooky. Well, Maine, is that all you got? <laughs> More seals? I can handle seals. I've been handling seals for two years now. Oh, okay. That's a lot of seals. I can do this, 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 I can do this. Uh... Lincoln, the gateway town. Yeah, because I'd rather be anywhere else right now. North Yarmouth, just a tree. Gardener. I don't see a single garden on that seal. If you really plant stuff in the ground, you gotta show me. Auburn. I appreciate the accuracy and color, but what's with all the feet? <coughs> Eastport. Big Moose. Ow, what the? Thomaston. Wickeset. Cape Elizabeth. All seals, all kind of beating the shit out of me at the moment. Okay, okay, you, you've made your point. You're too strong. I thought I could do this, but this country's flags are just doomed to be city. Hey! What? Jack! Go! You came back for me. My wushu senses told me you were in danger. Now go! Make your escape! I can't. My sleeve is stuck. Just take the jacket off! I can't just do that. It's, it's iconic. I've worn it like every cold day for like five years. It's a piece of shit. It's falling apart. No, it's not. Ignore! The jacket doesn't matter. What matters is our lives and a bunch of pieces of fabric flying from poles. <sighs> End of an era. Go! Defeat Maine! I will. Your sacrifice won't be in vain. I'm not planning on dying. No one does. Good point. <laughs> okay. I think I'm safe. Where am I? Judging by that flag? Ugly France. Okay, I have a kind of sort of plan, but I need to get somewhere first. I don't know how to get there from where I was, but I don't because there's no usual landmarks right here to orient me. But 
that's useful. Lubeck, Maine. Easternmost Point, USA. This is a very considerate flag. Thanks for the lighthouse, so I can see your flag. Thanks for putting on the sun and the moon, so I know that time exists in Lubeck. Thanks for making the bottom of your flag a fun fact. That should be a standard. Italy, birthplace of lasagna. Greenland, suicide capital of the world. This flag is designed like a welcome sign. All right, here I am. The capital of Maine, Augusta. Maybe because the capital they put in a little bit more effort. I'm just kidding, where's the air control? City of August. Uh, this, this is annoying me with the text being split across two colors, but only the A, like, why couldn't you wrap wrapped around a little bit more, like, a little bit, just a little bit less, or just not, not have the words at all, that, that's an option, that, that's a really good option. Did you see this canoe? No, you didn't. Maine, I don't want to fight, because I'd lose, but we need to talk. Present yourself to me. Maine, I know you're upset, I know you want me gone, and I know you like your seals. But these flags, you can do better. Okay, you wanted to make a flag about a canoe. Understandable, who hasn't? So you depicted a man in a canoe. Good start. But a canoe needs a lake. And you know, why not add some pine trees too? This isn't great. It contrasts badly, and it's not really fitting the rectangle shape of your flag. So to compensate, you write your name, and your state, and your favorite year. Maine, I know you have it in you to do better. Like, oh. This. Maine made a good flag. Old Town uses a canoe and sticks to it. While Newcastle is visually busy, Old Town would be instantly recognizable if it had more than 8,000 people. And you can tell they were confident because they didn't put a goddamn name tag on their flag. What? No! Okay. Another example. The town of Kittery starts off strongly with its blue and yellow design but it clearly needs some strong, striking symbol in the middle. So what do they go with? You seriously couldn't come up with some sort of unifying symbol that would actually mean something to your people? If you had something like that, maybe you wouldn't have to display your generic ass motto across the flag in a desperate attempt to have it mean something. Maybe you can learn from the lowercase p past and build for the uppercase f future by learning from Kennebunkport. It starts out the same, with a similar layout and color scheme, but when it comes time for the central symbol, do they opt for the seal? No! They use an anchor and some waves. Not exactly unique, but it's meaningful, it's recognizable, and most importantly, it's fucking visible. What? What is wrong with you? Look, I know you have it in you to make good flags. I've already shown you two. Do you just got to stop with these seals and these words and this everything? Because they're bad. Because, oh shit, did I never explain that? Okay, crash course on why words and seals on flags are bad, actually. What's wrong with them? They look just fine, don't they? Okay, yes, I don't think seals look bad. <gasps> There's some really pretty seals. Seals have their place, just not on flags. Seals started out as markers of authenticity. They were little metal stamps that you pressed into wax on a document to show that no, you weren't bullshitting, you really were the Earl of Gloucester, damn it. If you saw this little wax imprint on a piece of paper, you knew it was the real deal. They were a small, pictographic representation of some official body, and because they needed to be hard to forge, the more complicated the better. This design tradition never died. Even as seals turn from wax to stamps to printer ink to PNGs, each and every seal is a small little bit of design and symbolism and I think they're pretty underrated. But they serve the exact opposite purpose of a flag. A seal is a small imprint, meant to be viewed on a still piece of paper. A flag is a big ass piece of cloth, meant to be waving from a pole. A seal is a symbol of a government body that's meant to be hard to replicate. A flag is a symbol of the people that should be easily replicable by anyone who wants to show their pride. Yes, granted, they are both pictographic representations of a place, but that's where the similarities end. It's like if a doctor asks for a syringe and you hand them a shovel. Just like a good flag in place of a seal would be trivially easy to forge, a good seal doing the job of a good flag instantly turns into indecipherable visual noise. This is also the problem with words, by the way. Try to read this! I dare you! Have I made my point? What?
Oh, for fuck's sake. I've seen people complain that these simple flags look too corporate, like an oversimplified logo. Look, flags and logos both tend to be an exercise in minimalism. They both need to be distinct and recognizable at a distance. And surprise, minimalism sometimes looks like other minimalism. Who could have guessed? But a good flag is designed with the intention of being flown, not just showing up on t-shirts and Wikipedia. You don't need to condense everything down to basic shapes and colors. You want some great flags that look nothing like logos? Venice. Wipala. Fucking Britain. Detail is fine, as long as your flag is actually distinct and decipherable when it's up there being a flag. A flag's quality should be measured by its ability to inspire pride that people represents. That's just really hard to do when your flag looks like this. <sighs> do you get it now? Oh, fuck up! Listen, I still know you can do better. Like, look! As far as seals go, this ain't bad. The wheel is distinguishable. Plus the ship, this could be retooled into a really good flag. Oh, and this! Oh, bath! This is great! It looks English and maritime, which was exactly what you were going for. Limestone? Not a lot going on here, but the brown's unique? Not bad. Washington, Maine? Oh, that's really clever. Come on, Maine. Can you just make some more flags like these? For me? <sighs> no. Maine, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean, I just... This country needs better flags, and you're the one holding it back. You're a beautiful state. I just want you to be better. Like... Oh! This is the flag of my hometown. Portland. I talked about it way back when, and I still love it just as much. It's my favorite flag in the entire country. And you have Portland too. Your largest city. My city's namesake. If you can just... Give your Portland a flag that lives up to mine. I'll let you be. Oh, you're fucking dead. You mess with my Portland, I'll tear your Portland right out! How fitting that this whole journey begins and ends with a Portland. The difference is that while my Portland has a beautiful and unique piece of design, which manages to condense the spirit of my hometown into a simple abstract shape, the flag of this Portland is the most boring shit I've ever seen! A blue bedsheet with your name and an ugly fucking seal, with two brain-dead fish and what I assumed was a seagull, but is actually the new most lifeless phoenix I've ever seen on a city flag. The only thing remotely interesting about this flag is the motto, Resurgum, I will rise again. But you know what, other Portland? To rise again, you first have to fall! I spent two years talking about these flags. I think my message is pretty fucking clear. I have nothing left to say about these city, shitty, city flags! I doubt me has gone forever. It'll restore Gam sooner or later. I guess we'll see if it's learned lesson then. But for now, my job is done. The day is done. The battle's won. Main sunk into an ocean. And now, my friend, we've reached the end of all of that commotion. Now all flags in the USA are free to not be shitty. Let's gaze upon the flags of these emancipated cities. What? They're all still... the same? Was defeating Maine not enough?
Oh my god. The city council don't make flags that suck just for the vibes. They do it just to check the box, then move on with their lives. These flags weren't born from malice, no, it's apathy to blame. The only way they're gonna change is if we join the game! Star group, make a design, slap it on cow, slap it on signs, or I'll leave public opinion till you cannot be ignored. We'll advocate, we must reshape these seals into symbols and shapes till a sympathetic council person brings it to the board. It's fine if there's two shades of blue, cause this is something you can do. Yes, you and you and not me, cause my flag's already lit. From Birmingham to Nicosia, councils will be glad to see an email about something that's not vapid NIMBY shit. But can this work? Will anyone actually care? Oh hey, you're alive. And... Yeah. Spoken in Ogden and Springfield and Bellingham, Montpelier and Burlington. Des Moines and Wheeling and Richmond and Reading, the trademark the horse in Lexington. Norman and South and Salt Lake City, Lincoln and Sioux Falls in Kansas City. Nix's new flag is pretty damn sick, I wanna kick Anaheim in the dick. Syracuse, Tulsa and Salem and Mesa and Cedar Rapids in Peoria. Albany, Riverside, Provo and Mesa, Columbia, Columbia, Columbia. Several entire US states, Toledo and Philly might have to wait. They change Orlando, Duluth and Topeka, we must not debate, we'll gather to seek. A banner to rally below is not shitty. If Pocatello can do it, so can your city. It's your job now, you've just begun. But as for me, my job is done. No more extensive talks about shitty vexillology. I hope you'll stay, but if you don't, I guess this is goodbye. Thank you for watching Henry in 2023. City flags. It's done, and you can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I got some stuff already in my brain for next year, so see you then, and thank you.